Generative AI is taking the world by storm, but concerns about ethics and accuracy leave some skeptical. Here to debate the merits and the pitfalls of generative AI in forensic science are Dr. Carol Chasky and Brandon Epstein. Thank you both for your time today. Thank you. Hi. All right, this is a fascinating debate. Everyone's talking about AI these days and how we can utilize it. Dr. Chasky, I want to get started with you because you are a believer in utilizing AI tools like pattern recognition and machine learning. However, when it comes to generative AI, you have some concerns. What are those? Yes, that's the truth. I'm not a Luddite, but I am <laughs> really scared of large language models, which is what the generative AI is now based on. Right. And the reason I, um, I think these are dangerous is really twofold. One, they're disconnected from reality. They're really just predicting the next word. Okay. They don't really know how that word connects in reality to all the words that came before them or all the words that are going to follow. And falsehoods can only be detected in AI, in generative AI, if you already know the truth. What is it worth if you have to check it constantly? Right. And if you're only, it's only a useful tool if you already know the right answer. It's important when, when you're talking about forensic science to be dealing with facts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Epstein, you do believe though that there is a path to using generative AI. In what way? I think there is a path and uh, you know we're currently using it now not so much in the forensic science but more in the investigative aspect to create efficiencies that were not there before, especially as we start dealing with much larger data sets in, in, in my discipline in digital forensics. But I think there is a way much like we do foundational studies for various aspects of forensic science to treat the AI models and the large language models in the same way as, as a proficiency test to, to assign ground truth data and understand known answers, much like Dr. Chasky was saying, to identify error rates and, and to address it the same way we address human proficiency when producing outputs for use in forensic science. So when you are utilizing generative AI, do you have to take into account maybe some of this might need to be fact-checked. You have to take a little bit of it with a grain of salt. Absolutely, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, even in an investigative approach, I wouldn't use any generative AI now without that AI providing a citation to where it's from. Where it, I'm looking through large image sets and saying, show me a picture of guns from these 100,000 images. Reference that source material and then uh, really trust but verify. Uh, and, and I think that's where we are today. In the future, when we start doing things where the AI takes over uh, or provides uh, outputs that a human is incapable of due to mm. the complexities or just the, the sheer data sets, uh, I think we're not there yet. But I, I think that there is a pathway there, it, treating it very similar to how we treat human testimony in court to show validity in that. You say we're not there yet. How yeah. close do you think we might be uh, to having generative AI be very reliable? Uh, <laughs> Well, I, I, I used to think that, that uh, in my field, in deep fake technology and stuff like that, we were years away, and that was about, you know, that caught up in six months. So, <laughs> so I, would say, uh, I would say maybe years away, but I would not be surprised to see it much sooner. Dr. Tasky, what do you think about that? Do you think that down the road you can see generative AI being implemented? Not based on large language okay. models. I do believe that one of the effects of generative AI is generating a lot of evidence that we then have to determine, is it real or is it not? Right. So that's been a boon in a way that has um, initiated more good research in forensic science. Mm. But because generative AI has the habit of generating phony citations mm -hmm. <laughs> to give itself authority, mm -hmm. which is well known, I mean, the courts have re really slammed some attorneys who have used AI and generated a completely false case precedent. The fact that generative AI tools now create a, a, a kind of authority is what even makes them more dangerous because that authority so often is fake. I, I would agree there. I'd also, I'd also note that I don't think there's any path forward where the human factor comes out of this equation okay. altogether. Okay. There, there, there's no, no vision in my mind, and I think anybody's mind, that says that AI is going to replace that human examiner that really looks at that and, and, and provides confidence and results because of everything we just talked about. Yes, I agree too. What a perfect place to end it <laughs> as we come to agreement. <laughs> Thank you both for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. If you want more forensic science content, don't go anywhere. We've got interviews, highlights, and more from the 2025 AAFS meeting. Click here and get watching.